All right, fellas, it is your spiritual kickoff for the week, and it is Thanksgiving week. I'm very excited for this week. I know you guys are, too. Most 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 people get at least one day or two days off here this week. A lot of things happening, but there's a special piece of scripture that I want to share with you for this week that I really want us to focus on. And it's in the book of Isaiah, chapter 12, and it's the first two verses, okay? It says, then you will say on that day, I will give thanks to you, Lord, for although you were angry with me, your anger is turned away and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord. God is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Love that scripture. Love that scripture. Really want to share that with that scripture with you guys for this week, but in particular for Thanksgiving. And let's just get started for a spiritual kickoff. First of all, where is Isaiah? We need to know where these books of the Bible are, right? So it's about midway point of your Bible. So if you go find Psalms and Proverbs, most people, most guys, you, you can find those two. Keep flipping. You'll get to Ecclesiastes. Then you'll get the Song of Solomon. Then right past that is Isaiah. Okay. Isaiah is usually called the evangelical prophet because he says so much about the redemptive work of the, of the Messiah. Okay. So he's talking a lot about things that are, that are to come, right? So again, Old Testament, Jesus hasn't got here, but he is prophesying that the Messiah will be coming. Okay. Now, this is a special section of scripture for me in particular, because I spent you know, basically the month prior to our son arriving, which, you know, stay tuned for our next episode. I'll be talking about that a lot and really reading Isaiah and digging deep. And um, I had a bad morning one morning and I got to Isaiah 12. And I mean, I'm talking about Satan was throwing these just haymakers at me, man, uh, just of, 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 you know, how I'm ill-equipped and posture, you know, you're, you're not, you're never going to meet Judah, all these different things. I mean, he's just throwing all this, this tax at me. And then I sit down and I read this scripture and immediately my day was flipped. My mindset was flipped. Right. And I really wanted to share this with you again. Isaiah 12 is relatively short, but these first two verses say so, so much. OK, so let, let's let's talk about the very beginning. It says, then you will say on that day. On that day that, that Isaiah is talking about was pointing to the Messiah. We call him Jesus. Jesus is the ultimate answer that fulfills Isaiah's prophecy. Okay. He immediately says to give, uh, to give thanks to the Lord. And we can't rush past this part, guys. You have to remember, we have to give thanks to the Lord. So and my question for you right now, how often do you just go to God and say thank you? Right. Are we treating God? Like he's a genie in a bottle. We just got to rub him, got to make wishes, and we're always asking for something, right? Because if we're doing that and we're, just, and we're we're treating him like that, that should be a flag. That should be a flag, right? Think about this week. For this week of Thanksgiving, start off your prayer time with God. Thank you. That's simple. Spend time praising him, praising him, and let him hear you. We all like to hear the praise, right? So does God. Give him the praise. Just thank him. Just, just, just start off the day. Lord, just thank you for today. That's how I've started m many of my days here, here recently. It's just, look, thank you for another day. We take them for granted, but they vanish in a, just in a blink of an eye, they're gone. So just thank him for the day. I tell you what, he wants to hear you. And if you look at this, this scripture further, we can all relate to being in trouble. Because what does it say right next? You, you know, it says, for although you were angry at me, your anger is turned away, right? So we're all wicked sinners. Guys, you got you know, I've told you that before. Look, chief center right here. And we deserve God's wrath. How great is it that we have a good father that doesn't just give us what we deserve? Guys, because we deserve it. We, we deserve wrath. That's mercy, by the way. Okay. Uh, 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 and grace is what? Getting what we don't deserve. But mercy is not, is not getting what we do deserve, and grace is is getting what we don't deserve. But we need to keep that in mind as we go into this this uh, Thanksgiving season here. Jesus stepped in, and He is the propitiation. He is it for our sin. And what is propitiation? That's just the payment that satisfies. That's just a very fancy word, but that's very easily breaking down. That's what it means. He is the payment that satisfies for our sin. And how thankful are you that Jesus did that for you? 
It's just, it's incredible when you think about that. There's nothing that we could do to pay for it. Jesus already did it, right? And I tell you what, it's just, it's something we, we cannot just over, just, just go past. And how, and, and to look at how verse one fin- finishes up here, guys, the very end of verse one, and you comfort me. That, that comfort, there's only one true source of that comfort, fellas, and it comes from the Lord. You've heard me say before, you know, rarest community on earth is, is peace of mind. You know, I get that from old Phil Robertson. I hear listening to him every week and, and every, about every six months or so, he'll bring that up. And it's a good reminder for me, you know, that peace of mind. It can only be found in Jesus. That's it. So whatever you're chasing, trying to find peace, you constantly find yourself in this struggle of, of trying to, you know, of never content. Guys, slow down. Peace of mind. It comes through that relationship with Jesus Christ. Then in verse two, this verse two should be a charge to us. I'm going to tell you what, boys. Read verse two. But behold, my God, myself, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. That right there should have you ready to run through, through whatever stands in your way. I'm just thinking about like these NFL guys. I know you're going to be watching a lot of football this week, most likely. Just, just flooring somebody, right? Just trucking them, running over them. That should get you fired up, right? And why should it get us fired up? Because we have that salvation at our fingertips, right here, right here. And when Satan is throwing these darts, and he's throwing them at us, and they're hitting us hard, boom, 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 boom. What can we do right here? What does it say? Trust and not be afraid. Trust and not be afraid. God has you covered right now, whatever you're facing. And he deserves all the thanks. All the time. That's it. Thank him all the time. If you're trying to do this life thing on your own, fellas, look, you, you, you're going to struggle. You're not going to be able to succeed because you're, it's going to get overwhelming and you're going to try to do it on your own strength. And guess what? It's just not going to be able to do it. Find comfort and strength in God. And remember, you can access all that he wants, all he wants to give you by doing one thing. Just accepting Jesus as your Savior and then simply doing whatever he tells you to do. That's it. That's how you make this Thanksgiving meaning right here. And, it, and this is going to be one that you, I want this to be a Thanksgiving that you remember, not about the stupid turkey or how good the pie is, but about how great your Savior is. You're going to have an opportunity this week, I guarantee you, to, ha- to share your faith with someone else, most likely in your family. And I get it. That can be intimidating for a lot of us. But look, don't don't run from the hard. Lean into the hard, guys. Lean into it. And remember, trust, do not be afraid. For the Lord your God, my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. There should be nothing, nothing in our way that holds us back, particularly from sharing our faith with others. Guys, I'm saying what, this one, this one gets me fired up. Go read Isaiah 12. I guarantee you make this verse, make the whole Isaiah 12, like what your focus of this week, but particularly verses one and two, give thanks to you, Lord. We should give him thanks at all times. Now, come on back on Wednesday. I know it's the day before Thanksgiving on Wednesday. I get it, but you still, look, you ain't be doing nothing. You still going to be working or, or getting stuff ready. So throw the, throw the episode on because I want to unpack the journey of meeting my son Judah for the first time. And I really want to share that with you guys. And I'm going to talk about, you know, uh, being a dad, how all these things are, are changing. And then ultimately, when you hold your, your, your son or your daughter, how in that moment, we need to understand that, look, yeah, we have, we've been given that charge to be that, that earthly fa- uh, daddy, but he has a heavenly father that loves him more than I can ever imagine. And that's what I want to unpack for you guys. I hope you come back. Question I want you to think about this week, going into Thanksgiving week now. Who do you give thanks to most often? So who do you give thanks to most often? Really, think about that. Because if we're not waking up, we're not glorifying God. If we're not thanking him every day, guys, every day, we're just missing a major opportunity. 
So guys, you know, on our spiritual kickoffs, there's one thing I want to do. Every, every spiritual kickoff, I just want to take a, a, a minute here. And if you if hear me talking about all this Jesus stuff and you're not sure what I'm talking about here, look, it, it's very simple. We're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of us. You cannot nice your way into heaven. I heard a podcast the other day. It just broke my heart because the guy was basically an ag- ag- agnostic. He didn't believe in God. He wasn't an atheist. He wasn't against God, but he just he just thought, you know what? I'm just going to be just a nice guy. I want to live a morally good life. I want to do things the right way. And that's great. That's great. I, I commend you for wanting to do things the right way. But at the end of the day, when he passes, he will face judgment. Just like I will face judgment. And just like you will face judgment. And in that moment, (laughs) that's when it gets real. And you can say, you know what? Well, God, I was good. I was good. I never stole. I I, I took care of people. I gave to the needy. You could have all these accolades. I mean, you could be the Mother Teresa of dudes. And still, at the very bottom, it's going to say sinner. And sinner is anything that separates you from God. That's it. And you cannot do anything to get past that. There's no way other than Jesus Christ. So Jesus came. He paid that propitiation, the payment that satisfies. And what I was talking about earlier here today, guys, his blood, his life, his body was the payment that sacrificed. Because why? He lived a perfect life. He was God and man, 100% man, 100% God here with us. And he paid that, that payment that no one else could. And then three days later, he rose. And we need to remember this, guys. We are not worshiping a dead dude. This is a living Savior. He rose and he is alive to this day, sitting at that right hand of the Father. And it says no one gets to heaven except through him. And I believe it. So now all you got to do, guys, look, it ain't about nice in your way in. But it is about, one, admitting that you're, admitting that you're a sinner. You got to do that. Then you need to believe that Jesus is Lord. And then you got to confess him. You got to confess him. As, as, as your Savior as you, and believe in Him. And that's it. And once you make those steps, the Holy Spirit's going to come and dwell in you. At that point, you'll have the lion within. And then, guys, it's just a, a, it's, at that point, it's a matter of doing whatever He tells you to do. But I just want to make sure we're very clear. You can't nice your way in. Well, first of all, nice ain't the fruit of the Spirit. We don't need a bunch of nice. We need a bunch of kind. We don't need a bunch of nice. Jesus didn't like it. It wasn't, it wasn't full of nice stuff. It was full of kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, and some other fruit we'll talk about later. So again, if you just pray and accepted Jesus as your Savior, send us an email, support at the line within dot us. Just hook, you know, send that to us. All I want to do is put a big arm around you, give you a hug, a virtual hug rather, and then send you some resources to help you along the way. Because you just entered a battlefield. I want to make sure you're ready for the battle that you've entered into and give you some uh, some armor that you need to put on so you'll be ready for that battle. So, guys, thank you again. Come back on Wednesday. A reminder, a quick reminder, our Founders Coalition, that thing is is cranking. And, guys, it's a big, it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful opportunity for so many guys out there to, to join our community. This thing is growing. We have guys joining all the time. So the Founders Coalition, that initial Founders Coalition opportunity ends on January 1st. So the time is clicking. Now, if you're listening to this spiritual kickoff on Monday, the the, the 21st, tomorrow, tomorrow, the 22nd, we have our first Ask Me Anything. That's going to be an amazing event. But JD, we'll be unpacking uh, intimacy and Christian marriages. Guys, you don't want to miss that. And the only way that you get to do any of this stuff is inside the community. So get in right now. You can get in for free. Check it out. If you like it, join the Founders Coalition. Be a part of it. Be a part of it right there. But you get 30 days to try it out for free. Check it out. Come and join us. We have some amazing conversations happening in there. Get to be part of our Bible study, our Lion Lunches, uh, our Ask Me Anything events. Have daily devotionals that I I work through, just scripture reading. It's just me reading scripture, but giving insight. It's just another way for us to engage and grow together. And that's what it's all about, guys. So again, if you're liking the show, please give us a rating. Just hit five stars, write a review. That makes all the difference in the world. 
share it with someone like that really does make a big difference. Just share it, just text it out, share it with your, with your discipleship group, share it with your Sunday school class, share it with your pastor, just get it out there. We need to have these types of resources in the eye, the hands and the ears of more and more men. Yeah, we have courses, guys, on finances, courses on Bible studies. Guys, we have so many items inside our community. So I pray you take this opportunity right now, this week. You'll probably have some down week, some downtime this week. It's usually a little bit more of a chill week uh, going to a, to a holiday. And check it out. Just ch- pop in and check it out. See what you think. See if you think there's an opportunity for us to serve you as the iron that sharpens iron in your journey. So come on back on Wednesday, guys. I'm going to unpack that story of Judah Levi. I can't wait to tell that to you guys. Pray you have a great day. Remember this verse out of Isaiah, Isaiah 12, 1 and 2. Go get this one cemented in your heart, fellas. Remember to give thanks this week. I'm thankful for each and every one of you. Love you all. Thank you again for taking the time to listen to The Line Within Us. Come back on Wednesday. Look forward to sharing that with you. Now get out there and unleash the lion within. Most men know what it's like to do life in a vacuum and feel isolated on the journey. We believe every man needs a community to help them become the men they were created to be. More than just a website or podcast, we are a community of Christian men who are committed to supporting and encouraging one another on our journey to become the best versions of ourselves. We are men who have fought the good fight and come out victorious. The lion within us is here to help you stop feeling lost, defeated, and alone. Instead, find community and connection with other men that will help you achieve your goals, live a life of purpose, and be the leader God intends you to be. Visit thelionwithin.us to join the new growing Lions Den community today. 